Are you pulling your hair out because your team are not using LinkedIn? Or are you an employee and your bosses don't get LinkedIn? Oh my goodness, we're all missing out on so much. And in this episode, very short, snappy episode, I talked to the wonderful Sam Mullins all about employee advocacy, uh, why we should be doing it and why we should be doing more on LinkedIn. I share a bit of my passion as well because I'm passionate about people using more LinkedIn to get more business, to get more people working for us, to get more people talking about us, to build our brand. So without any further ado, let's join Sam. So do you do employee advocacy on LinkedIn? Uh, I am joined today by Samantha Mullins. Samantha, tell everybody who you are and where you're from. Hi there, I'm Sam Mullins and I'm one of the directors at Latitude HR, which is the people and culture consultancy. People and culture consultancy. So come on, for, for, for people who sit in their shed and don't know anything, explain that a little bit deeper, please, Sam. So it's really focusing on kind of those principles of making your people happy, getting the best from your people, helping them to be productive well and stay with the organisation. And too often we're reacting and we're running and particularly, you know, HR professionals running to keep up. And it's it's about helping organisations take a step back, think a little bit more strategically about what they're trying to achieve through their people to take a step forward um, and really helping organisations with the implementation of that and what actions um, they can do that will kind of retain that talent, but also get the best from that talent as well. Awesome. Right. I've got a load of leads for you because those are all the places that I used to work at <laughs> or some of them, not every single one, if you're listening. But but yeah, why is it? Why is it that it's always too late? I, I, I left the job once um, and it was purely it was purely because I asked for a raise because um, my the, the piece, the person who was reporting to me was earning more than me. And I turned around to the powers that be and said, look, it's, surely I should be paid the same. Um, there was no money they couldn't pay me anymore when i left they offered me uh, so much more to stay but the damage had already been done absolutely yeah. crazy any anyway employee advocacy on linkedin yeah. um that is such a great question and i get asked it all the time and that's why we've set up this this quick recording today um so tell me what were you trying to do and what what were you finding about it so I think what happens is corporately we focus on what's the key message, what's the corporate message. It's quite a kind of formalized message. But when we started to think about it, I personally did a LinkedIn challenge in January. I'd never posted 15 years on LinkedIn, never posted before January um, and followed a LinkedIn challenge. I know. Sorry, Ashley. Sorry. Confession number one. Um, so I followed this LinkedIn challenge and it, and it was three times a week, posted three times a week. And I found by the end of the month of January, there'd been a behavioral change. But actually what I was starting to see is by talking about why I went into the area I went in, what I love about it, what I love about the place I work, what's important to me, started to do something for me personally in terms of kind of feeding into why do I work here or why do I work in this industry? And also started to get noticed by others and it gave me an opportunity to shout out my team, talk about team successes and we talk about sharing success all the time and it quite often feels quite sort of fake or forced whereas it was an opportunity to do it really authentically by just following these tip, you know, these kind of topics of the day basically, just a, just a prompt for, for something. Um, and so actually, I started to look at how we turn that into employee advocacy in, in a larger way within the organization I was working at the time. And how can we get more employees posting on LinkedIn, not saying here's a great job, you should apply for it, but actually passively talking about things like what flexible working means to them how they look after their well-being and talking about the things that interest them so people could start to see how actually the people that work for this organization have got something to say and something I connect to. So we kind of ran our own challenge and started to look at how that could support any corporate strategy we had. So so that's kind of, it got, it prompted my thinking and I don't see a lot of it on LinkedIn, which was my kind of question to you earlier, Ashley, which is, I suppose, a little bit why not, but I kind of possibly know the answer to that question but also do you think it's something we should be doing more of as organizations 
absolutely yes 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 why can't we you know if you're if you're down the pub chatting to somebody okay you're down the pub and you say oh how's it all going oh i'm doing this doing this and you're sort of like what would you do for a living i do this and do this i love it i love it da, 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 da. and you see all that passion all right and you talk about it down the pub yeah you you, you have fun and, and, and goodness knows what else and it's so like oh really have they got any jobs going oh yeah 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 of course they have you know you need you need but whatever and but, but you've got all that passion yeah yeah when it comes to LinkedIn, no one does that, um, you know? And, and it's sort of like, bosses, listen, bosses, listen to this. Get your team talking about what they do on LinkedIn. If they love working for you, how many other people are going to start getting that? All right. Now, at the moment, when I go down the pub and I'm chatting about how brilliant my job is, it's my mate and a couple of other people. There might be someone on another table seeing us getting all excited. Like, oh, what's he excited about? He loves his job. Yeah. But that's it. It's only in that pub. And it might just be a couple of people. If you get your team talking about what they do on LinkedIn, how many people are going to see that? Oh, my goodness. And I don't understand. I don't understand why it is the bosses don't do that. But I do know exactly why. Because I was talking to a guy and I, and I said, um, you know, you need to get your team doing more on LinkedIn. And he goes, well, why, why, why is that? And I said, well, it's going to improve hiring because their biggest problem wasn't getting work. Their biggest problem was getting team, getting staff, getting people to come to work for them. And I said, oh, and the biggest trouble with, 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 with now we've had gone past COVID is people are applying for jobs that they, they live in Devon, but they're applying for jobs in London because they're going to get paid more and they can do it remotely. And so, so woe is me, our company's going to fail. And I said, well, no, you need to get your team doing stuff on LinkedIn. And so like, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. Da, da, da. Uh, and, and, you know, I can come in, I can help you with this. All right. So this guy, Went to the powers that be and the bosses turn around and go, oh, forget all our staff doing stuff on LinkedIn. They'll see that there's other jobs and they'll all leave. Nice. So that's the problem. It's the small mindedness of people in the top roles in businesses that don't get LinkedIn and they're just, you know, oppressing all their staff. You know, staff think that LinkedIn is just to get a job. I don't want to get another job. It's too much hassle. Da, 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 da. I'm quite happy with the status quo. And I don't know what else is out there. All right. As soon as I go on LinkedIn and I see this amazing world, oh my goodness, I want another job. So so call Sam in, get Sam to make your place the, the best place there is to ever work at. No one's going to leave. And then they're going to shout about it on LinkedIn. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes perfect sense. And actually what was really interesting, because we didn't anticipate this when we ran ran just a trial, just one trial, we didn't anticipate actually the impact it would have internally. And I think that's a really important point to make. So yes, there's all that getting the message out there. But what we started to see was internally people connecting with why they stayed for the company, what was important, the fact that there was flexible working, well-being was looked after. And by talking about it, it really cemented that that was the case. But interestingly, what we started to see then was comments from others in the company. And, and it went further. And it went further than LinkedIn because particularly with the pandemic, silo workings are a, a lot more of a thing now. And what, what we found is by having a kind of group that was there as a, a kind of support group that went through this challenge together, they started to identify opportunities to work together in real life and making those links and saying, oh, actually, I've learned something about you that's made me connect to you or the work you do. And I'm doing this and actually let's link up and let's start. So actually, far from in some ways, the fear, which is a real fear, I think, of everyone's going to suddenly leave. I think if your organization's got it right, it actually pulls people into the reasons why they work there and actually is, is a kind of retention tool and it starts to kind of help people. And as they get better connections at work and they're, you know, they're working outside their silos, that obviously then feeds people feeling more productive, feeling happy about their role and, and kind of connected to the kind of company. So we didn't anticipate, I don't think, we'd get that kind of impact, but within a month, that's what we were seeing people reporting those types of behavioral change as well as some confidence to kind of put out there and understand what LinkedIn was about and it's more than just a, a CV and actually it's an opportunity to 
demonstrate the thought leadership that your organization has you know it, it's it shows the type of people that work there and and you know what they're talking about and the type of expertise they've got so um I, I mean I think and maybe throw this back to you Ashley I I think also organizations are really fearful of people are just going to go crazy on social media and start saying all sorts of things about the company that are negative um so I'd be interested in kind of hearing your reflections on what you say to people that feel like that great question yeah look all we do is we have a policy within the company of do's and don'ts and you make them so simple that even my three-year-old grandson will understand yeah and it's it, it you know do say this don't say that and that's it it really doesn't have to be complicated but we overthink absolutely everything and because it's just the minefield let's just not do it let's just not do it and it's ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous i work with loads and loads of of companies that that have got the odd let's call them mavericks all right they're not they're change makers they're doing decent things on social media that is really getting them noticed yeah but everybody else in the in, in the in the business is sort of like oh no we can't do this don't do that what we need is we need to make these mavericks the stars and and start letting them help everybody else in the team because it is just an amazing place and and i i don't i don't get why people don't see it because it's it, linkedin has changed my life now you probably don't know this but when i set, set my business up it was only by accident because my wife didn't want me to have another job. I've had 30 jobs, Sam. All right. My wife didn't want me to have another job. And she said, set up on your own. You just do what you were doing in your previous role. Now, because I didn't fully understand um, how an anti-competitive clause would stand with me setting up my new business, I just thought it would be fine. And I ended up having to pivot to do LinkedIn. Now, because I've pivoted and I'm doing LinkedIn, I am so deep with LinkedIn um, it has opened up so many doors. I've written a book. You can see it behind me. Um, I'm doing public speaking. I'm going out to different places and seeing different people, being invited onto you know award-winning podcasts. And this is all because I'm doing stuff on LinkedIn. People message me and say, Ash, how can I do this? How can I do that? And it's it's just opened up so many doors. So if you're a business, I don't know, you might be a lawyer, you might be an accountant, and you want to get more people coming to work for you, get them doing more on LinkedIn. It is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And your leaders, if you can get your leaders talking as well, I think that's that's great. And maybe that's a step on. But I think you can get your employees talking. But actually, if you can get your leaders that are talking about what they're doing, what interests them, it really starts to put an authenticity to the message of the organization and what it is you're trying to achieve when you see the type of people that you'll come and be leading the organization that you're going into. No, absolutely fantastic. Sam, I could talk for you. I could talk to you for absolute ever. Um, we could take this on, on, a, on a much deeper level. But thank you so much for, for dropping in and agreeing to do this with me. Um, would you be up for coming in and doing a live show one day? Um, and we'll talk about this even more. Yeah, definitely. Definitely would be. Superb. Right. Now, if I need any HR advice and help, what do I do? How do I get hold of you, Sam? Yeah, so it's it's Sam Mullins. I'm at Latitude HR. I'm I'm on um, LinkedIn, but also you can find me on my website, which is latitude-hr.com, and all the details about how to contact me are on there. And though all of these details will be in the link below and in the link uh, on the podcast if you're listening on the podcast. Sam, you've been delightful. Thank you so much indeed. Cheerio. Thanks, Ashley. Here we go another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. As long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. 